in the year 1490, something remarkable happened. Up until that point, the church basically refused to acknowledge that witchcraft existed and was real. But in 1490, the Pope issued a decree and he made witchcraft illegal. That means from that point on, if you were accused of doing witchcraft, you could be sentenced to death, either by burning or by drowning. Now that meant that from that time to about 1750, worldwide over 50,000 people lost their lives. They were executed because they were under the suspicion of practicing witchcraft. Today's story is about Holland's largest witch trials. They took place in a village of Roumont around 1613. Now, when you start to research this, you find out that all the big witch trials, like hundreds and hundreds of people executed, they were like in Belgium and Germany and France, but not so much in Holland. In Holland, they were reluctant to use torture as a method of confession, which was really good because in other situations, you know, when you get tortured, you start to confess to everything. So what happened abroad a lot was somebody was brought in on suspicion of witchcraft. They tortured them and they gave them some other names because people who are tortured will tell you anything. So then they got the other names and the other names they're brought in, they're also tortured and they also give you names and they also give you names. And pretty soon this whole trial starts to snowball. You get a snowball effect. And before you know it, you have to kill half the village. That actually happened. But in Holland, if you want to find trials with people above 100, you can't. There aren't any. If you find with several dozen, you can find one. This case that I'm talking about in Roermond, that's, uh, I think, the only time in Holland where there was this really witch panic and there were lots of people executed. I'm talking 75 witches were on trial and about 45 were killed. How it started was in 1613, there was a 12 year old girl and he, she, she was talking to a, one of the magistrates. Just a casual conversation, but halfway through the conversation, she opened her mouth and some coins came out. And then she opened her mouth again and some rocks came out and then some nails came out. So the magistrate was looking at her with really big eyes. Like, what, what in the world is this? So she he just asked this 12 year old girl, she said, where did you learn this trick? So the 12 year old girl said, if you look behind me in the forest, there is a man, he has a red hat and a red velvet coat. And he's pointing at me right now and he's telling me, I shouldn't be telling you this. So they immediately recognized this as witchcraft. So they took the 12 year old girl, put some pressure on her, and she read it out her mother. She said it was her mother who taught her this. So they bring in the mother. They start torturing the mother. And the mother says, yes, it's true. There are other people. And she points to one of the master of the witches. Jan van Es, that actually was pretty famous around that time in that area of Holland. He was a famous healer. So the soldiers come and they pick up Jan van Es. They start torturing him and guess what happens? He gives even more names. But he actually confesses to a lot of things. He says, yes, I'm able to heal people, but it's because I made a pact with the devil. I'm able to heal nine people, but my deal is I have to kill the 10th one. 
If this is true, we will never know because people say crazy stuff when you're torturing them. But that's what he said. He gave 40 names of 40 witches. Some of them told the most scary of stories. There was one story of a woman who said, I killed, he, he, she worked as a midwife basically, and she killed over 40 pregnant women and 150 children. And she danced naked in the woods because, well, apparently that's what witches did back then. Probably still do. <laughs> so in total there were over 45 executions and there was this total witch panic. Now I would like to provide a little bit of context because when I talk about witch trials, you know, people say, yeah, it's just the church getting rid of competition. And it was, but there are other aspects as well. Um, there's also just this aspect that people, um, you know, don't like their neighbors. There's a lot of hate and envy in society and these witch trials, they just gave a good excuse to people, which you could just like, you know, if you don't like your neighbor, you could just snitch on the church and tell, you know, uh, my next door neighbor is a witch. Then she get transported and they did like a little test. And the test was like, we'll tie a rock to her and we'll throw her in deep water. If she floats, then she's a witch and we'll burn her. If she doesn't float, well, then she wasn't a witch, but she's still dead. So it's just the way it was kind of like old school kind of purge thing, a purge where they could just Anybody could be targeted. But there's another aspect that not a lot of people talk about because um, it's very little known. These witches were competition for the church, but they also were competition for somebody else. What you have in the 14th, 15th, and 16th century, you have the rise of doctors and medicine, not modern medicine, because that was like chemical stuff was 18th century. That's very recent. But you had the first remedies and the first doctors. You know what the first remedy was for a headache? You could like put a big pan over your head and then they hit that pan with an iron stick so that the pan would ring. They would call that vibrational therapy. Another cure for a headache they invented was like, you should just put a rag with opium on your head and it will solve everything so you can imagine with cures like that no it wasn't really a good business model because they couldn't cure anything that was the one thing and the other thing was people went to like these people of the forest they went to these witches and these witches they knew they knew cures they knew herbs some of them even knew why you got sick and they could help you find that balance once more so it was also for the doctors very handy to get rid of the competition you know we had a turbulent two years here uh, in western civilization and when uh, this pandemic started there were suddenly some fires in medicine factories in india you know, there was this medicine, I believe it's called Ivermectin. Supposedly, it's very good against this virus that's been bothering us for the past two years. But when this pandemic started, the factory suddenly caught fire. Now, when I tell this to people, people always go like, yeah, that's like terrible, but it's probably just a coincidence. What these people fail to realize is, is that pharmaceutical companies and doctors have been burning their competition for at least 500 years. So it was the church, it was your neighbors, but it was also very handy for the ones that sold medicine that they could just literally burn the competition. That my friends is the story of the greatest witch trial in Holland. I'm very grateful that in Holland we were somewhat sensible I mean, how sensible can you be when you burn people? But at least we don't have the numbers in, uh, like they do in Germany and France. Um, thank you for watching.
it's starting to rain, so I really need to stop this video. So uh, I'll see you again next week.